Welcome to running on reddit. R slash entitled parents, where the entitlement knows no bounds. So, this is a story that happened to my friend this year and I'm honestly so shocked by this. So, basically my friend is a regular good student at school, has amazing after school activities, and is student government president. She also has a perfect SAT score. It has been my friend's dream to go to Cornell. Both her parents went, and she has been in love with it for years. Now, enter entitled mom and entitled son. My friend's mother gets a call on her mobile from the entitled mom. Basically, it goes like this, entitled mom. Hi, are you friend's mom? Friend's mom, yes. What do you need? Entitled mom, friend is applying to Cornell. Early decision, right? Friend's mom, yes, she is. Why? Entitled mom, can she please withdraw her application? My son is applying there, and we want there to be less competition for him. Friend's mom, if you agree to pay my daughter's full tuition wherever she goes. Sure. Entitled mom. Excuse me? My friend's mom just hung up on her. My friend is still applying to Cornell. Hopefully, she gets in, rather than this entitled mom's spawn. Wait, this entitled mother thinks that, by asking to prevent one person from applying increases the chances of her kid getting in? She should probably call all of the thousands of other applicants too. Nonsense. I was attending an anime convention around 2 years ago, and it was the first time I had gathered the courage to cosplay. Doki Doki Literature Club had been out for maybe a month or two, and was super popular. So, me and my friends decided to go as the main girls, with me of course dressing up as Monica. The whole thing was amazing. Conventions themselves are always fun, but when you're cosplaying it's a whole new thing. During this time, it wasn't uncommon to have people come up and give all four of us compliments or ask to take pictures with us. It's also important to note that for whatever reason that there's protesters at these conventions. They're your usual overbearing religious nutjob fun police types, but I have no idea what they actually protest. Anyways, one day we are walking around when this guy who looks to be about our age comes up to me and my friends were going out for food and has this conversation with us about our costumes, getting into the game, giving us compliments, etc. He then asks to take some pictures with us, asking for some specific photos. One is where we are all trying to pull at him and then he wants to take one on one photo with each of us with me looking in the background looking angry or spooky. It makes sense, if you've seen or played the game. The final picture is of me holding onto his arm with a big smile, while he looks terrified. After the photo we are exchanging Instagram info, and I casually ask if he's there with anyone, and he got super uncomfortable, and said that he was there with his family. As the day goes on we are messaging each other over Instagram, and things had started to get pretty flirty. Eventually, he asks me out to dinner at a restaurant near the hotel we are staying at. The date itself was pretty good, he was funny, we watched a lot of the same shows, and could banter back and forth on differences in opinion. A few weeks go by, and we are dating at this point. We're over at his place and things are getting pretty hot and heavy on the sofa. Luckily nothing too raunchy was going on because his parents walk in with groceries out of nowhere. Apparently, he hadn't told them about me, because they were all like, oh, who are you? Although they didn't seem too upset on what they had walked in on. I'm beyond mortified, but the parents sit down across from us, after putting the groceries down, and start asking questions, what's my name, how did we meet, etc. The both of them seem very excited to meet me at first. I introduce myself, and tell the story of how we met, and pull up our photo together with me in costume, and show it to them. They get these grim looks on their faces, like they'd just found out I killed someone, and give their son this death glare. At this point they're asking me to leave, and I'm asking if I did something wrong, and apologizing if I did. Entitled mother, it's just we want someone modest for our son and we don't see you two being a good match. Me, what? Entitled mother, you don't exactly line up with our beliefs is all. Please leave, we need to talk with our son. Me, I don't understand. Entitled mother, you need me to spell it out? He doesn't need some atheist slut in his life. Boyfriend, mom. Entitled dad, don't raise your voice to your mother. Walk your little friend out and say goodbye. 
They argue for another minute or two before my boyfriend walks me out. He gives me a kiss and tells me he's sorry and he'll call me later. When he finally calls back, he explains how his parents helped organize those protests at conventions and how they had some weird views like that. He said he fought with them for over an hour about how he was done with their tribe after they demanded he never speak to me again. He ended up moving in with me about a month after that. It was kind of soon, but he didn't really have anywhere to go since his parents had given him an ultimatum and apparently his entire family is like that. On the bright side we are still together. So, at least the story has a bit of a happy ending. Anime chicks be crazy though. Maybe they were all a great match for each other. All parties involved supported fairy tales. So, today I had to take my dog to the vet for her semi-annual blood test. She absolutely loves going to the vet and was super excited to go play with all the techs. Afterwards, we walked to the pet store just down the street because she's definitely on the nice list and deserves a new toy for Christmas. Now, my dog is an ache eater, so she's pretty big and I understand that she's a little scary looking. She's also super gentle and seems to understand that kids especially can be intimidated by her. So when she sees new people she won't run up to them, but she will get excited and start wagging her tail, which is adorable, because it's a curly cinnamon roll. As a result, I don't feel the need to do anything like pull her away from scared people, I honestly think that only makes things worse, because she'll always wait for them to come up to her anyways. So, we walk into the store and it's pretty quiet. We are just heading towards dog toys and my dog is laser focused on the table of treats. A mom and her kid walk past, and he points to my dog and calls it a wolf. Her face is all black, and she's big enough that this isn't really a stretch. The mom then stops me, and the following conversation happened. Lady, excuse me, that breed is banned, you can't bring it in here. Me, I'm pretty sure the store doesn't have a banned breed list. It's a pet store. Lady, that's a wolf hybrid and it's scaring my kid. You need to leave. Me, I'm sorry your kid is afraid of dogs, but she's not a wolf hybrid, and she's not bothering you. This whole time we are still standing next to the treat table, so the dog hasn't moved an inch closer to them. She's just staring at the food with her tail wagging. Lady, my son is scared. You two need to leave. Me, no. At this point my dog decided that these must be new friends. She took a step towards them with her tail still wagging at top speed. She stretched her head towards them, though they were still 2 or 3 feet away, to ask for pets and the kid was just frozen staring. The mother just picked up her kid and walked the other way. I just grinned and we went to look at dog toys. When I went to check out, the cashier told me the lady had complained about my wolf hybrid and they had to tell her that all dogs who aren't acting aggressively are more than welcome in the store. The lady was ignored and my good girl got two treats from the nice worker. Not a very climactic or crazy story, but I was amused that some crazy lady thought a dog shouldn't be in a pet store. That dog be bamboozling. She was giving that poor lady and child a frighten. Let me know in the comments below. You have a heckin' good boy. If you like the content and want to support the channel, like and subscribe right now or you'll be running on fumes. So, a little backstory is in order. I have two young adult children living at home ages 18 and 19. They both work and go to college. I trust my kids. I trust their decision making skills. When they graduated high school and turned 18, new rules went into place. No curfew. Just call me and let me know if you are going to be out all night so I don't worry. You can call me at any time for a pickup. No questions asked. Just don't be stupid and drink and drive. Yes, your significant other can sleep over or come over for the weekend. Just let me know what's going on. Pay a small rent during the summer when you are working full time and pay your part of the car insurance. You have your chores, I have mine. We all work together. I tell them if they are being buttholes, they listen. In turn, I listen to them. There is very little fighting or arguing in my house. This is their time to spread their wings and learn how to be a responsible adult and have me as a safety net. Lately, one of my kids significant others has been spending a lot of time over at my house. He is here pretty much here all the time. 
Two days ago, I got a phone call from a number one didn't recognize and I answered. It was my daughter's boyfriend's mother. Me, hello. Entitled mother, you need to tell my kid, he isn't allowed over at your house anymore. Me, who is this? Entitled mother, this is Tommy's mother. Me, I already know where this is going. Oh. Tommy's mom. I have to say you have raised a great kid. He is always polite and respectful. In fact, gets cut off. Entitled mother, look. I don't care what you think about my kid. He is never at home. He isn't spending any time with me. Me, okay. There isn't much I can do about that. Entitled mother, yes, there is. Tell him he can't come over to your house anymore. I want him home. And you. You set a bad example for my son. Your daughter has no curfew, and I am sick and tired of hearing how nice it is at your house. I miss him and want him home. Me, speaking very lowly and basically growling into the phone. Are you done yelling at me? Entitled mother, nothing. I think I stunned her into silence. Me, I will take that as a yes. Do you trust the way you raised your son? Entitled mother, what? Me, it's a simple question. Do you trust the way you raised your son? Entitled mother, of course I do. What does that have to do with anything? Me, do you trust him to make good decisions? Entitled mother, yes. Yes of course. She is starting to calm down now. Me, mother to mother, I know things are not okay at your house right now. Her husband drinks a lot. I'm trying to give your child a safe place when things are not okay at your house. She starts to cut me off at this point, but I won't let her. It's not your fault. Entitled mother, nothing. Me, he throws your son out for days at a time sometimes, doesn't he? Entitled mother, yes. I can hear her choking back the tears. Me, do you need someone to talk to? Would you want to go out to lunch? That way you can feel safer knowing whose house your son is at, and that he is safe. M, that would be okay. We were on the phone for about an hour after that. What started out as an entitled mother was just a scared woman feeling very very alone. Sorry, there wasn't any righteous retribution, but I think it turned out okay. I'm going to try and get 19 year old Tommy's curfew changed from 10pm to midnight and maybe he can stay over for a weekend. The ending though was quite the plot twist. Glad both mothers could come to an arrangement. I read about it in our local newspaper years ago. It was quite a well known story at that time. An elderly doctor couple with no children came to know about a newborn baby girl whom someone had left in a waste dump. The baby was about to die. They took her to the hospital and then formally adopted her. Years later, the girl herself became a doctor and earned good money. An old poor couple came to the girl claiming to be her biological parents and demanded that she give them money as they didn't have any means to provide for themselves. The girl didn't believe them, but after DNA tests it was proven that they were indeed her biological parents. How they knew that wasn't mentioned in the article. The couple kept demanding money from her saying as she was their daughter, it was her responsibility to look after them in their old age. When the girl asked them why they left her to die, they tried to justify their actions and said that if they hadn't left her there, she wouldn't have so much money right now. It was because of them she had money, and so they deserved some of it. They wanted money as their other kids, sons mostly, either didn't earn, or didn't want to take care of them. When the girl refused, they threatened to go to court against her. In retaliation, she sued them for abandonment and a few other charges. There was no follow up article, so I don't know what happened to the girl or those pathetic excuse for human beings. This is quite a tragic and unfortunate story. These so called parents expect the world from their abandoned daughter, yet they are surprised the daughter doesn't want anything to do with them. Shocker. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on the bell or you'll be running on fumes. See you in the next video.